discussing the fourth verse of Shushi Shashtakam. Um, we'll just say Mangalachari and then we'll get into the discussion. So, Magyana Timurandas Yagyananjana Shalakaya Chakshun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Guravena Maha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swapadanti Kam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Yuta Padakamalam Shri Gurun Vaishnavamscha Shri Rupam Sakrachatam Sahagana Raghunatam Vitam Twamsi Jeevam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Saitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakam Vitamscha He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dinabandhu Jagatpatek Opisha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostate Tapta Kanchana Gorangi Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Rishabhanu Sutta Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vancha Kalpa Turubhyascha Kripa Sindhubhya Evacha Patita Nam Bhavanebhyo Vaishnavebhyo Namo Namaha Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadara Shri Vasavi Gaurabhata Rinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So I think we have the fourth yeah, verse on the, on the screen. So we'll just begin by reciting this fourth verse and then we'll, we'll go forward from there. Okay, so I think we, we can just recite it all together. Nadanam Najanam Nasundarim Kavitam Vajagadisha Kamaye Majanmani Janmani Shari Bhavatad Bhakti Ahoy Tuki Twai Okay, so before I begin, I request the blessings of all the Vaishnavas, um, His Holiness Chanamuri Maj, all my seniors, that we can um, respectfully share something in the Association of Devotees and hopefully something that will um, help us on our, on our journey of Krishna consciousness and be pleasing to Srila Prabhupada. Okay, so oh. this, this full verse of the Shikshashtakam is um, a very beautiful offering by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And this, this fourth verse is a statement of um, someone who's experiencing the stage of Ruchi. So in this fourth verse, um, I'll just read the translation from um, Chaitanya Charitamrita. So this is CC Antialila. Uh, let's see, verse number. Uh, okay, verse number 29. Okay. O Lord of the universe. Actually, you can please repeat after me. O Lord of the universe. Lord of the universe. I do not desire material wealth. Materialistic followers, a beautiful wife, or fruitive activities, described in flowery, in flowery language. All I want, life after life, is unmotivated devotional service to you. So, um, this verse is indicating is indicating indirectly 
the desires of literally all the living entities. <laughs> Questo verso indica in modo indiretto il desiderio di ogni essere vivente. Ah. This um, Nadanam is um, Danam means wealth. Dana significa um, ricchezza. This verse also, as, it go, as we go through those different points, it relates to what we call the four um, Purushatas. E questo verso è, è riguardo i quattro Purushatas. So Dharma, Arta, Karma and Moksha. Dharma, Arta, Karma and Moksha. So when Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is saying um, Nadanam, he's saying I don't want Arta. Which is this, um, mater um, this is economic development. Okay, so then he talks about um, Nadanam, Najanam. So, the jana, the community, the, um, the family. So he's, he's stating, and this is the, the consciousness of someone that Ruchi. That their desires have transcended even the, um, the bodily human attachments al desiderio di trascendere anche le attrazioni, gli attaccamenti al cuore umani. Sundarim means be literally beautiful. Uh, what sorry? Sundarim Sundarim. means beautiful. Sundarim significa bello. Often this is, you know, beautiful wife, beautiful women. Uh, a volte va accompagnato con ad esempio bella moglie o bella donna. But we can say it means the opposite sex. Possiamo dire lo stesso ovviamente del sesso opposto. And this point, Jammani Jammani Shri. This point is actually indicating, because this is birth after birth. I just want your causeless devotional service. Which means that in this stage, one has given up the desire for moksha or liberation. E questo vuol dire che diciamo, l'autore di questa affermazione non vuole più nemmeno moksha la liberazione. So here the practicing devotee only wants to engage in devotional service to Krishna. Qui il devoto avanzato ha come unico desiderio quello di impegnarsi nel servizio devozionale a Krishna. And he doesn't mind where he is as long as he has that devotional service. E non gli importa dove si trovi, eh, a patto che abbia continuamente questo servizio devozionale. So, this verse has very deep significance for each and every one of us as practicing devotees. Quindi questo verso ha un significato molto profondo per ognuno di noi che è impegnato nella pratica del servizio devozionale. When we consider material desires, we can, can, we can, also, we can also look behind them. Quando noi consideriamo i desideri materiali, noi possiamo anche guardarli dall'alto verso il ah, Cosa c'è dietro? So, for example, when someone wants wealth, ad esempio, quando una persona desidera una, la ricchezza, if we dig more deeply, se noi scaviamo più in profondità, we find that there's something that's behind that. Eh, riusciamo a trovare quella cosa che è dietro la ricchezza. When someone wants fame or followers, Quando una persona vuole la fama o dei seguaci, again if we dig more deeply we find that there's something else behind that. Se noi scaviamo più in profondità possiamo trovare qualcosa dietro. So actually material desires are like shadows. Quindi in realtà i desideri materiali sono come delle ombre. They come with an expectation that something will lie beyond that. E arrivano con delle aspettative che qualcosa c'è dietro di loro. There is a saying that we we do not live long enough to learn everything by experience. <laughs> the idea behind this is that by the teachings of Krishna consciousness, we can understand what's behind the shadow. Someone may have so many material opulences. Una può avere molte materiali, 
with the idea that this material opulence will give me happiness. But because we are the soul, nothing material can, can give real satisfaction to the real self. So sometimes if one endeavors one's whole life to try to gain something material, then what can set in is a bitter disappointment. And that disappointment can be that we've put so much time and energy pursuing something that does not give us the, the satisfaction that we were expecting. Okay. And therefore there is this concept in the Bhagavatam of chewing the chewed. And that's why oftentimes even so-called materially successful people actually end up getting into more and more degraded activity. It, it, it forms a type of madness. When one engages in something and then they find that it's no longer giving taste, and if they don't have this philosophy of Krishna consciousness, if there isn't an understanding that there's an alternative, what sets into that person's life and consciousness is a deeper desperation. Where one tries to squeeze out of material activities more and more, not even enjoyment, but stimulation. And that's why this chewing the chewed is such a great, a great way of explaining it. Because one puts more and more effort in and gets less and less taste out. Now there's also a logic here. There's also a logic to this verse. There's a term called Shastra Yukti, which means the logic of the Shastra. These are the things which people in the material world consider will give them taste. But this is being transcended at this stage because one has spiritual taste. So again, a very natural connection between the two things. As Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, Param Dritsva Nivatate. What, one is able to give up something lower by cultivating a higher desire. So, the Shushi Brajasunda Ki Jai, Shushi Dagna Paladev Subhadra Maharani Ki Jai, Shushi Gonitai Ki Jai, Dosa Maharani Ki Jai. So this is something that we have to really understand. Everything in Krishna consciousness has its practical application. How do we engage in our devotional service so that we feel infused, inspired and um, progressive? It is a question that every devotee should constantly reflect on. And this reflection, how do I, how do I enthusiastically engage in devotional service? 
is the greatest form of protection a devotee can have. Is the greatest form of protection a devotee can have. So, when we engage in devotional service, what we mean by that engagement is engaging the body, the mind and the words. Sometimes a devotee will regress. And that happens if I'm engaged but my, ment my mentality and reflection is still on the material world. We can, we can keep ourselves moving progressively. When we understand that, uh, when we, as talking about these particular desires, that every engagement in material activity also comes with some chastisement. There are three levels of material activity. In the mode of ignorance, it's just a desire for sense pleasure. In the mode of passion, it's a desire for wealth, honor, fame. But there are also material desires in the mode of goodness, which is to be virtuous and have good character. The difficulty with all of these desires is the temporary nature of those desires. Sometimes devotees think that I've seen non-devotees who behave better than my devotee friends. <laughs> Sound familiar? <laughs> it's not quite like that. There's a few things that we should always remember. The difficulty with the material consciousness is, is it creates a certain kind of blindness. And with that blindness, even though we think we're seeing things clearly, we're not. As long as we're in material consciousness, we should always be cautious because we should understand that by definition, if we're in material consciousness, there must be something that we're missing. We have all these very subtle unconscious biases. For example, when I say that I know some non-devotees who behave better than, than, than some devotees, there's a, there's a different way of seeing that. The bias is in the way that we're comparing people. We are comparing people. When I say that, what I'm doing is I'm comparing the devotees in the lower modes with the non-devotees in the higher modes. It's my bias. A proper comparison would be to compare the devotee in the mode of ignorance to the non-devotee in the mode of ignorance. It will be to compare the non-devotee in the mode of passion to the devotee in the mode of passion. It will be to compare the devotee in the mode of goodness with the non-devotee in the mode of goodness. That's actually a fair comparison. 
so many things are distorted by this um, impure consciousness. Molte cose sono distorte da questa coscienza uh, impura. But the beauty is that as we rise through these different stages of bhakti, quindi noi dovremmo uh, elevarci da, da tutti questi livelli attraverso la bhakti, everything becomes exceedingly clear. Tutto diventa incredibilmente chiaro. For example, where we hear in this fourth verse that one has no desire for these things. Ad esempio, dove in questo quarto verso non si desidera alcuna cosa. We should understand that it's not some kind of artificial repression. We can consider that it's because there is a higher taste and that there is a higher perception. Again, going back to what we mentioned about seeing through the desire. So, for example, it says that someone, you know, this, this point about wealth, dhanam. There's a saying that more money, more problems. <laughs> so, sometimes when a person accumulates wealth, so many other things come along with it. Again, because of our attachment, when we look at something, we only notice the parts that we're attracted to and we don't notice the other things that are attached to it. We think we can take the good bits and leave the other stuff behind. But this is Krishna's energy, it's not possible. Night follows day. Everything has that duality in the material world. So, the more that we contemplate this verse, the more that we actually understand that the only taste, is not just real taste, the only taste lies in spiritual enjoyment, in spiritual service. Because it is the only activity that has no duality to it. As much as we go up, we must come down. Materially. In other words, if we think about it in the material world, if there's something to gain, then it means that there's something to what? To lose. And there's absolutely no way to have one side without the other. In relation to this verse also, we understand that at this particular stage of Ruchi, one has no interest in material desires. It is also explained that at this particular stage, there are certain qualities that begin to manifest. So this full verse of Shikshashikam relates back to the first verse of Shikshashikam specifically. The statement Shriyas Kairavya Karava Chandrika Vitaranam. Yeah. <laughs> that, yes. This, this point about auspiciousness that's mentioned in the first verse. It relates to Ruchi. And the devotee at Ruchi has four auspicious qualities. Number one, he has a natural ability to please all people. Number two, he attracts or she attracts everyone's affection. Number three, 
the person possesses all good qualities. And number four, the sadhaka feels happiness. There's a natural connection here. When one has lost all material desires, one no longer feels that sense of competition with others. So therefore one can be truly happy for the success of everyone. One can genuinely feel joy and happiness in seeing others also grow. As long as I want anything in this material world, you become my competition. Because these are all material resources, so if I ha for me to have, someone else has to have not. So this is about rising above those, those shackles. Um, uh, yeah, prison, uh, um, a bond. Yeah. It's very interesting that um, Srimad Bhagavatam begins where the Bhagavad Gita ends. So Bhagavad Gita ends Sava Dhamma Paritya Ja, Mame Kamishara Namvra Ja, Aham Tvam Sava Pape Bhyo, Moksha Yishami Masucha Ha. And Shiva Bhagavatam, it kicks out all types of Dharma which it considers to be kaita or cheating. Sri Sridhar Swami, in his commentary, says that the Srimad Bhagavatam's rejection of cheating Dharma includes the rejection of moksha. The Dharma that the Srimad Bhagavatam ultimately um, promotes is Prema Dharma, that Dharma that is actually leading to Prema. So in relation to these points about these different desires that Lord Chaitanya is explaining at this stage that one as a sadhaka does not want. We can consider something very essential for ourselves. There's a consideration in spiritual life. That Krishna's vision is slightly different to the way that we see things. We consider often what we're giving. Yeah, we may consider, you know, I come to the temple, I do some service, I chant. We may consider that I'm even tolerant of those devotees who are a bit irritating. So imagine someone comes to the temple. And let's say they give a thousand euros. So some people would consider, oh, this person's making a, a real gift, a real offering. And then later the same day, someone else comes to the temple. And then they only give a hundred euros. Someone may think that the first person gave more. It's not always like that. So the first person who, gave, who came and gave 10,000 euros, that person was a billionaire. 
So they gave 10,000. But Krishna saw how much else that they had. The person who came later gave a thousand. That was virtually all they had. So in Krishna's eyes, that second person gave more. The consideration here is is beyond what we're giving. How much are we holding back? So, Yeyatamam Prapadyante. Krishna is basically explaining that he's willing to reciprocate. We, we sometimes misunderstand how this devotional service is unfolding in our lives. So there is the, the way that the world works, we can call this Dharma. The way that the world works, we can call this Dharma. And some people do things in a dharmic way, they act properly. Above that, there's karma. Meaning that we've done certain things previously. Karma. Karma, yeah. So, even if we act properly now, the whatever response we get now, it can be a mixture of our proper behavior now and the reactions to our improper behaviors previously. It's important to see that because otherwise people will think why the bad things happen to good people. È molto importante considerare questo perché se no le persone si pongono la domanda perché cose cattive succedono a persone che agiscono bene. It's just like you're working in a job and you just got paid but also the same day you had to repay some debts. Quindi è come se consideriamo una persona che al lavoro viene riceve la sua busta paga però lo stesso giorno deve pagare tanti debiti. So the money came into your account and also the debt was repaid at the same time. So someone who doesn't see clearly thinks this, you know, working doesn't pay off. But someone who's more um, attentive understands, yes, I'm working and something has come, but I also had to repay something so it's then gone. But then there's a third level. Beyond Dharma, beyond our karma, which is our previous activities, there is a stage of bhakti. And that is where Krishna intervenes. But the intervention is based upon how much we let him in. So he, we choose how much we are taking shelter of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. It's a decision that we're making at every moment of our lives. It's a decision that we're making by how we spend our time and how we spend our energy. And it's a great opportunity for every single one of us. Because we don't actually know what kind of karmic patterns we've come in with. Even good karma has bad out outcomes ultimately. Because it forces us to again take birth in the material world to experience the results of that good karma. 
materiale per subire gli effetti di questo danno positivo. So, as we consider this aspiration to develop taste in Krishna consciousness, we can understand that that taste is acquired especially when we associate with those who have taste. We can also understand that that taste is acquired as we execute devotional service very carefully. We want to practice devotional service while carefully avoiding misunderstandings about the teachings. And also carefully avoiding um, the wrong dealings with the devotees. So at this stage of Ruchi, which relates to this verse, the devotee has great taste for Nam Sankirtan. Their devotional service is unmotivated and uninterrupted. And there's a great experience of joy in the hearing and chanting, which they are constantly interested in doing. We always want to consider that there is a higher experience of life. We always want to consider not just the things that we're running away from, but rather the thing that we are running to. And as we carefully move and work towards that direction, the Supreme Personality of Godhead and His representatives will help us. Yeah. So it's important to understand that we're not alone and that the desire for happiness is natural to every single living entity. As we mentioned yesterday, we are Ananda Mai Biasat. So if we do not progressively move towards gaining that taste in spiritual life, we will be like an, a, an individual who leaves gaps open for Maya to come in. We can consider here to what extent am I engaged? It's a very, very important question in our spiritual life. To what extent am I engaged? How do I make sure that I am fully engaged in this devotional service? Engaging the body, the mind, the words. Words also means intelligence. And that protection, it not only keeps the consciousness um, in some positive activity, but it does not allow room for Maya to come in. Um, there's, a, there's a story. If I remember it correctly, some devotees were, were traveling in India. On the train. And then um, there, was a, there was, it was quite packed, but there was a space next to one of the devotees. A, like a space to sit down, yeah. 
c'era c'era uno spazio tra questi due tutti So he allowed um, some um, gentlemen to sit next to him. And then the gentleman called his wife to sit next to him. <laughs> and then she called her children to sit next to her. And literally pushed her defoli out of the seat. <laughs> and the point that was made is this, this is just like Maya. You give her an inch. She'll come in and take everything. Yeah. So, we should consider for ourselves where are the gaps in my engagement? Where is my time going in ways which are not progressive for my Krishna consciousness? There's a, sub, there's, a real, there's a small caution here. This should not be done in a negative mood. We sometimes see in our communities that sometimes devotees' day-to-day -day life is or can feel like a, like a struggle. <laughs> and in order to get away from the struggle, the devotees are looking for their next retreat. <laughs> I look, yeah. It is really important to give some consideration to how I, how I arrange my life in Krishna Consciousness. Prabhupada sometimes talks about how we should mold our life in such a way that we can always think of Krishna. And at the same time, Krishna says, Shushukam Kartam Avyayam. He says that this Krishna consciousness is joyfully performed. So again, not with a mood of some kind of negativity, but with inspiration. Where are the opportunities for me to have an even more Krishna conscious experience. You see, going back to this verse, we can consider where is the gap for me. Some devotees, they, they have no issue with money. But there's such a, a strong desire for followers. <laughs> Some devotees, there's not so much big um, on followers. <laughs> are not so much desiring followers. <laughs> but there's a real gap in terms of members of the opposite sex. <laughs> <laughs> so we have our weaknesses. If we just take a moment to consider, we know where our weakness could be. And it's good to ask ourselves that question. Because we may or may not know where our weakness is. But Maya definitely knows where our weakness is. And therefore, the tendency is that she'll just attack someone wherever she knows that they are weak. Mm -hmm. So there's always an opportunity for us, if we're honest, with ourselves. There's always an opportunity for us to receive more of Krishna's shelter and protection. We don't always understand the power of, the, of this process and the way that Prabhupada has arranged everything. 
noi a volte possiamo non comprendere la potenza di questo processo e di come Srila Prabhupada abbia pensato tutto. This morning program is extremely powerful. Questo programma del mattino è estremamente potente. It gives tremendous opportunity for devotional advancement. Dà una tremenda opportunità, una opportunità molto buona di fare l'avanzamento spirituale. And it also even protects us from different material difficulties as well. In so many subtle ways which are not immediately obvious. Okay. Um, so maybe one last comment on that. So we want to go back to this point we made about seeing through things. So whatever we're looking for in the material world, you could argue that you're not really looking for that thing. We're looking for something that we think that this particular thing represents. So I was listening to something that Prabhupada was um, a point that Prabhupada was making in one class. In una lezione stavo ascoltando, Shia Prabhupada diceva. It was a beautiful point. Era un punto molto molto bello. Prabhupada was giving the example that you have some wealthy gentlemen and they get sick. Prabhupada stava facendo l'esempio che some wealthy wealthy, yeah, wealthy man, yeah. qualche benestante, parlo di persona benestante, si ammala. And even though this person can afford the best medical assistance, the person still dies of that disease. And then you have someone in a poor village who gets a similar illness. And they don't have the same material facility. But they survive which immediately indicates that it's not the wealth itself that makes a difference. With wealth or followers, members of the opposite sex, whatever it is, whatever one is considering that it will give, ultimately only things only work with the sanction of Krishna. Ogni cosa in ultima analisi accade per la sanzione di Krishna. So he's actually behind everything, making it all work. Quindi Krishna in realtà è dietro tutto ed è, ed è lui che fa funzionare ogni cosa. And he's the, the, final dis, um, the final judge of what happens. Lui in ultima analisi è il giudice supremo di quello che succede. So a devotee who's more deeply realized. Quindi i devoti, i devoti che sono they actually understand that why, that why waste time with the external things when I can go straight to the source. Prabhupada was speaking to, I think it was a reporter. And they were talking about false gurus. And they said, oh, you know, you're not like these false gurus, you know, they drive around in, in expensive cars. <laughs> oh, so I've got expensive cars. <laughs> he said, but they've got lots of money. Perhaps it's I've got lots of money. <laughs> Whatever they named, Prabhupada's point to them, he said, it's, it's not about that. The point is, Prabhupada is using everything in Krishna's service. And he's dependent upon Krishna fully. And whatever he's, whatever he's um, received, he understands that this is Krishna's arrangement in service, to, it, um, it, as he's serving. When we, when we don't develop our spiritual consciousness, what we do is we make ourselves poor. Noi non la spirituale, ci 
the greatest poverty is when a person seemingly has so much externally. La povertà in realtà è quando esternamente una persona può sembrare molto ricca while at the same time being so empty inside. Ma allo stesso tempo si sente così vuoto dentro. And that's the danger of the modern age. E questo è il pericolo di quest'era moderna. And it's even more dangerous because you can have the most poverty-stricken people showing off all the things they have around them and people don't see that the reason why this person is showing off all the things that they have around them is because they have nothing inside them. So we have to develop that vision to go beyond the external. We have to consider where are these gaps in our spiritual life. We have to consider in an inspira- inspiring way what can I do to be more fully engaged, more fully absorbed. Okay, so maybe we'll stop there and see if there are any questions or comments.